So this is going to be a quick overview of my newest toy. This is the Orion Mototech uh, 55 watt CO2 laser engraver. Um, it's got a cutting surface of 16 by 24 inches. And in this video I'm going to kind of talk to you about how I like the machine so far. I've only had it for two, three days. Um, but what I've liked so far about it and what I haven't liked so far about it. So I think the first question I had as a customer is how big is the actual machine because my shop is not very big so if you measure this out the machine is about 45 inches by roughly 30 inches and the height of it from the ground to the top part is about 26 inches so that kind of gives you a rough idea of how big this is now, I'm a pretty short guy, I'm like 5'6", uh, but you can't just put this directly on the ground, at least in my opinion, you'd be bending over too much. So I built a stand on casters, and my stand is roughly 18 inches tall, and that puts the work surface at a height that I really like. Um, if you've watched any videos about the CO2 lasers, this came with all of the peripherals that you'd expect. It came with a... USB cable, Ethernet cable, um, it came with a water pump, it came with all the connecting hoses, um, so all of that was here. One thing that you do re need to realize is that this unit does not come with like a reservoir to keep all of your distilled water when you pump it through to cool down the, the laser. Um, not a huge deal if you have a bucket somewhere laying around, it, it works just fine. Um, I also purchased this machine with the light burn software included which I think was a huge benefit. I'm typically the type of person who uses open source software, um, but I decided to go get the Lightburn software and it is fantastic. Um, and increases the usefulness of this machine tenfold. Couldn't be more happy. Just in case people are wondering, I bought this through Amazon. I'm sure you can get this exact same laser cutter through eBay uh, a little bit cheaper. Um, but uh, I'm not the biggest fan of buying really expensive things off eBay. I just don't quite trust the platform as much as I trust Amazon. So I bought this machine through a reseller based out of California. Um, that made me feel a lot more comfortable with purchasing such an expensive item. And it also is nice because it ships from the U.S. locally. So instead of having to wait months for this to show up, it showed up in two weeks. Another reason I really like this machine is that it comes with pass-throughs. So what that means is I can pull these panels off like this and put large pieces of material lengthwise through the laser cutter. Um, and that gives me more of a, an area to work with. So there's actually tutorials out there that show how you can take a long piece of material and feed it in in increments and actually make large you know, engraves on a single piece of wood. Uh, that's beyond my skill at this point, but it's cool to know that I do have the capability of doing that in the future. So here's another feature of this laser cutter that I liked. According to the manufacturer, this has some sort of tinting that helps protect any users if the laser kind of glares off something and shoots up at the screen. Um, I don't know how well it works, but it kind of gives me a level of safety that I like. Um, so that's kind of a benefit. One thing I should point out and it's not a big issue to me, but I don't know how they form these covers, but as you can see here, there's like a definite defect right there. It bulges out. Again, not a huge deal, but I thought I'd mention it, as if you're someone who really likes everything to be perfect, um, my front cover is not, so just be aware. Another safety feature that I liked uh, about this cover, and it's probably hard to see, but there's a little proximity limit switch over here. And according to the manufacturer, if the lid's open, it disables the laser, which I think is great. So um, that's there. Makes me happy. This is what the inside of the laser cutter looks like. Uh, this came standard with the honeycomb bed, which so far I'm a fan of. I don't know anything different, but I don't dislike it. Um, it does have a manual Z height controller. To some people, that's a disadvantage. I honestly kind of like it because I feel like I'm in a little bit more control. And again, this isn't a CNC machine, so you don't need the Z-axis to really 
move independently. Uh, I, I think this works just fine. Uh, the linear rails look to be very well aligned. They're really well greased, and we've got those everywhere. Uh, the belts that they're using for this machine, as you can see back here, they look to be really in good shape. They're, they're good and sturdy, and they're beefy too. They're not cheap looking belts. Everything is routed in drag chains. So as you can see, the drag chains on the X and Y axis, um, it looks to be well put together. I was really impressed with this. Um, out of the box, I test for laser alignment, and based on my very novice understanding of how all this works, um, everything was really well aligned. I know that whenever I tested the laser output at the nozzle, it was dead center. So it was really nice. I didn't have to mess with calibrating the mirrors right off the bat. So if you've been doing any research on laser cutters, you've probably heard of the Ruida controller. Um, and this comes with the Ruida controller, and that's important because that this allows you to use the Lightburn software. So even if you don't buy this exact laser cutter, I suggest looking for a Ruida controlled uh, laser cutter. So this is the back of the machine, and this is the laser tube. Uh, when it came in, I looked at it, it was not broken, which I hear is kind of common to get these from China and the laser tubes being broken, but this one's great, no problems. Had some packing material on there that I took out. Um, it does still have some clear tape on it, clear packing tape. I have no idea if that's supposed to stay or not. Uh, if you, anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. I'm leaving it just because it seems a little risky to take it off, um, but uh, if I should take it off, please let me know. I did start pumping water through this, so let me take a step back. Uh, if you're new to laser cutters, just like I am, uh, what you may not realize is that these laser tubes get really, really hot. So to dissipate the heat, you actually pump water through it. Um, and that water takes away the heat and maintains the life of the tube. Uh, so when I first got this, I actually hooked up the pump and I started pumping water through it and checked all of the connections. So all these tubes there, obviously bring the water in and take it out and nothing leaked, everything looked really good. So I was very impressed with that. Again, I checked the alignment of the mirrors when I first got it and it seems to be dead on. Uh, so very impressed with that. Uh, one small gripe, again, very small gripe, is that the sheet metal work here is not bad and especially pretty good for what I paid for this machine. But I mean, it's still a little bit clunky. As you can see here, it takes a little bit of trying to get this thing to shut. So this is lower down on the back of the machine. As you can see, this is the exhaust port um, and the water inlet and outlet. This unit does not have an air pump. The air pump's actually internal. Uh, I'll show you that here in a second. So there is no place to hook up external air. Uh, as you can see, they just gave you, gave me a uh, little dryer vent tube that uh, goes on here. I had issues getting the dryer tube to actually fit on the output of the fan. So I had to cut it a little bit, and then I threw some Kapton tape on it to keep it from splitting. It works fine. I mean, it, it does what it needs to do. Uh, the power of the exhaust fan inside the unit isn't great, and I heard that from a lot of other people as well. I mean, it works fine for what I'm doing. Uh, again, this is just me and my shop. I'm not using this for commercial applications, so it's not bad, but just know that. Okay, I've opened up the back of the machine, and as you can see here, here's the exhaust fan. Uh, here's your water inlet and outlet pipes. Uh, I was really impressed. All the connections seem to be rock solid. As soon as I hooked up the pump, I opened everything up and really looked at it. Um, no leaks. I've also looked at it after a few hours of runtime. Again, no leaks. So, been really impressed with all these connections. One thing I was not aware of that this unit has, at least this is what I believe it is, but I believe this is a pressure sensor because I hear it clicking every time I turn on and off the pump and based on how it's hooked up, I'm pretty sure it's a pressure sensor. Um, and I believe what this does is it'll shut off the laser if the machine detects that there's no pressure in the line, which means the pump's not running because you never want to run your laser cutter without the pump on. So this is a cool little feature I didn't know this unit had. Uh, again, I'm guessing that this is what it does, but it makes sense in my head. Uh, as you can see over here, there is, this is the air pump. It's not the best air pump in the world, uh, but so far it's been working for me. I haven't had any issues. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but back there, those are the lead screws that control the height of the table. Uh, and again, they're 
they're well greased they seem to be substantial um, it looks really pretty good uh, and it's also nice that you can kind of get back here and clean everything out so pretty impressed with this overall I'm very happy with this laser cutter but there are some issues with it the first one I want to point out is this laser switch so they give you this key and it fits into this slot and this allows you to engage or uh, not engage, but enable or disable the laser. It doesn't turn on the laser, but it enables it. The problem is there's no on or off indication of which way is on, which way is off. And also, you can take the key out in either position. So it's not like a car ignition to where it's on, you can't take the key out. Again, nitpicky, but I don't really like that. You can probably fix this mostly just by writing on and off with a Sharpie, but I still think it would be nice if you couldn't pull the key out if it wasn't in the off position. So I've opened up the control panel of the laser cutter and in general I've been pretty impressed with what I've seen. Um, all of the wires have ferrules on them. All of them are really well connected. Uh, they put hot glue on them to keep the ferrules inside of the connectors. Kind of lukewarm about that to be honest but overall it's not bad. The gripe I have with this is the digital ammeter that they say this unit comes with. It does come with a digital ammeter, but it's located right here. Um, and when the cover's on, you can't see it. I mean, you can look through the vent on the sides, but it's definitely not very user friendly if you ask me. So this is the, again, side of the laser cutter. And here you can see your connection ports. I'm not going to really talk about those, haven't had any issues, but I, what I do want to talk about are these switches. So I watched a couple other YouTube reviews of this unit and they, a few of them discussed like mushy feeling switches. I didn't think anything about it. I figured if the switches were mushy feeling, you know, so be it. As long as they worked, I didn't care. Um, and they have a good snap on. See how that one, it didn't snap like the other ones did. I don't care about the sound, I care about the function. So this legitimately happened to me. Um, to enable the laser, you have to turn this on, and then whenever you go to work on the laser, it's always good practice, like whenever you open up the cover, to shut it off. Um, I was working on the laser, so before I did, I turned it off, and it must have not fully engaged, again, because it's a mushy button, and as I was working in the laser, I heard a little click, I didn't think anything of it. I came out and then I looked down at the switch and it would had it must have kind of got stuck partway in the off position and clicked itself back on. Um, again, this doesn't turn on the laser; it just enables it. So I didn't get you know hit with the laser or anything like that. But I thought that was a huge issue. I know I talked about a few safety concerns I have with this machine, but I've altered my workflow process to help mitigate any safety concerns. I use laser safety glasses anytime this machine's running, whether the door's open or shut. Also, before I open the door and work on it, I always make sure that the, the key switch is off and also the toggle switch is off that enable the laser. Those two coupled with the proximity switch on the door should keep me safe. So what's a good YouTube review without a demonstration? Here you're gonna see me cut something out I designed in Lightburn it took probably two minutes to design this in Lightburn, so again, Lightburn, great software. These engraving cuts were made at roughly 250 millimeters a second at 40% power, and I've sped up the video by 200% just to kind of keep the video shorter. So this is what the finished product looks like. I did take it out of the laser cutter and use some 320 grit sandpaper on it. And then I hit it with some compressed air to clean all of the, the dust out of the grooves. But yeah, looks pretty good. And that, my friends, is the last piece I needed for my Westeros poster. So this is a 3D model of Westeros. And I just cut all of these pieces out with the laser cutter. And I was able to create the file for this and cut this out in two days of work. So, yeah, pretty impressed. Just got this laser. Light burn was key, in my opinion, on getting something like this done. So, 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Thank you very much for watching, and have a fantastic day.